the benefits of therapy. Okay. So, this is my overview, my essential question, what is therapy, different forms of therapy, how therapy helps people, the cost of pharmaceuticals versus therapy, and then there's examples, personal experience, who my mentor was, and my conclusion. Um, there is talk about sexual assault and domestic violence, so warning you now, you know, we stuck about that, don't we sleep. My essential question was, what effects does therapy have on people, and if therapy really does have benefits, or is it just a bunch of bogus? <laughs> um, therapy is a medical treatment that is attempted, is the attempted re medication of a health problem, usually following a diagnosis. Many people go to therapy to help with any condition or like anxiety, and it usually gives them methods on how to cope with PTSD or anxiety, and give them methods on how to help with that. There are many different forms of therapy. There's traditional therapy, there's play therapy, and there's fear therapy, which is a very drastic way of doing therapy. So regular therapy is usually the general, what people think of when they think of therapy, which is just talking to a person, and then there's Play therapy, which is where you don't have to be a kid to do it, but usually has like you do things with your hands, like building things with blocks or play doh, and it usually helps them open up. My sister actually does it because she doesn't like talking, so having her hands be busy is good for her, and she opens up more. Um, fear therapy is very drastic. It's like last resort, really. It's to help you face your fears. So like, if you got in a car accident and someone died or whatever, you'd stick them in a car and then drastically get more better about it and eventually be able to sit in the car. How therapy helps people. Therapists give people methods on how to cope with what they have been through. For example, if you have really bad anxiety, they give you methods on how to help with anxiety attacks. My, I personally have had one. I mean, I had it at work. It's not a very fun experience. Uh, I couldn't breathe for like an hour or so. Still a little shaken about it, but it happens, and having the methods to help with it definitely is beneficial. Um, the cost of pharmaceuticals is the therapy. There are medications that are very expensive, and that therapy is usually cheaper than that. My sister's medications without insurance is like three hundred dollars, forty-two dollars, and therapy is usually like sixty to one hundred twenty dollars. Usually sessions are only an hour, and my friend also takes an antidepressant. And with that, insurance is like $2,000, and not everyone has access to health insurance. So having a different way for people to help, like Ella's homeopathic methods, also help with the costs if people can't afford to buy medications or to get any access to medications. The difference between therapists and psychiatrists, again, therapists help with methods to help cope with what you've been through, Why psychiatrists are the ones that diagnose you and can prescribe you medications. So if you have bipolar depression, they would diagnose you and give you the medications if you want to take that route. Otherwise, they'll just ask if you want to do the therapy and the medication, just therapy. Um, things I learned. There are many things that go through a therapist's head. Um, it's like you can't talk about certain things like religion, romance, family, money, all of that, because it could be something hard for them to talk about. If they grew up without money, then that could be hard to talk about money with them. But they can talk about it. It's kind of like a HIPAA rule type situation. Because therapists also have HIPAA. So you can't talk unless you're hurting yourself or others. Then they can't really talk about whatever you're talking about to other people. Um, American culture. American culture seems to be more go, go, go. And no one really wants to take a breath because it's seen as lazy. But in reality, multiple people need to take a break and take a rest day, but not a lot of people seem to want to do that because it seems unproductive and they want to keep going and that time is money. You can't really achieve much if you're not going everywhere. Okay, domestic violence. Victims of domestic violence try to leave at least eight times before they finally do. There are many factors on why it takes so many tries to get out. There's they have kids, they have pets, or there's nowhere to go. So like the abuser usually will seem like a nice person in the beginning, and then they'll slowly take away your friends, your family, your job. You have no house, so you have nowhere to go. So it's kind of like a keeping you there 
you can't leave because you have no option to leave. An example, this one talks about sexual assault, so not that. A client that my mentor had had been sexually assaulted by her stepfather. It's like any sudden movement would trigger her and her room had to be quiet and calm. So many people experience different things with sexual assault or whatever they've been through. So certain things can trigger them. Like if you make any sudden movement, something during the time that happened, that sudden movement might trigger your anxiety or your fight or flight. My personal experience. Okay, my father has PTSD from going overseas. Um, it was the second time he went and he kind of, he didn't really come back the same and like little things set him off. He did go to therapy. He is better, but he's still not the same as he was. I was kind of little, so I don't, not all there, but it's kind of like that. And then my sister has anxiety, depression, and she was recently diagnosed with ADHD. So having that, I've been around it my whole life, and my grandmother and mother have depression. I didn't know as a kid, but no, I know now. So they tried to like tell me different things. Like my mother had medication, she called it her happy pills. And her depression isn't sad depression, she gets angry. So it kind of fluctuates from person to person. They can have really high highs and really low lows. It really depends. And then majority of my friends have anxiety, whether it's diagnosed or not diagnosed. There's multiple different forms of anxiety. There's panic anxiety and social anxiety. Um, my sister has both. So <laughs> social settings, like doing this, really sets her off. And going to grocery stores kind of panics me. I don't like it. I feel like I'm going so slow and people are judging me. Heart problem. And then there's panic, which is basically you panic. And then you could be panicking because you can't breathe or you're panicking because your parents are home at the same time they're supposed to be and they didn't tell you and stuff like that. And then statistics. There's, these are the number of U.S. adults who have received mental health treatment or gone to counseling in the past year from 2000, past years from 2002 to 2021 in millions, I guess. And there was definitely a spike in the amount of people that went to mental counseling after COVID hit because there's lots of People lost their jobs, people couldn't find ways to get money, they, many people were homeless, many people died. So going through that and of course being alone and not seeing anyone, definitely take a damper on your mental health. So multiple people have gone to counseling. <laughs> my mentor was Sarah Miller. She was my Spanish teacher for three years. She also happens to be here, she's right there. Um, <laughs> before she moved on to be a full-time therapist. And it's definitely taught me things I didn't really think about beforehand. And that like, if you have depression, like little things, like taking a shower seems like a huge step than it would be for some people. Doing homework is a huge thing than it is for other people. So, and the school systems usually have that in place of like a 504 plan, I think that's what it's called. Not really sure. And where it, it's a system to help people that have some challenges in school and like have mental illnesses and they have that stuff. In conclusion, I think therapy can be this regular long hour long commitment when you're encouraged to slow down, breathe and check yourself physically, mentally and emotionally. I feel like a lot of people should definitely take that break. I mean, I personally should, but you know, life is kind of crazy. Um, and therapy connect, can connect you to legal, legal community and other resources like information and connections if needing restraining order, housing, healthcare, all of that. If you need help with finding different things, I can give you sources to go to and things to help with that. I also, I learned a lot and took what I learned and implemented it into my life. I also think that everyone should go to therapy. I mean, I'm, I don't go to therapy, so I can't really say much, but I think everyone should go. It's helpful to have someone that will actually listen to you and has an unbiased opinion. And it's nice to talk to somebody that you don't know and they can't go and tell somebody else, you know, hit buzz a thing. And then my work cited page. Yay. <laughs> Take a deep breath, honey. Woo! That was stressful. <laughs> you did fine. Okay, any questions? Um, you mentioned that a majority of your friends have anxiety, and I think that um, 
is something we're seeing is that anxiety is increasing, and I'm not sure if that's we're just noticing it more mm -hmm. or it is truly becoming more of a problem. But I'm wondering, what do you think schools can do to help students experiencing anxiety? Mm -hmm. I feel like it also depends on the school system and like if we should have actual therapists and not student guidance counselors or whatever, because mm -hmm. they can only go so far. Mm -hmm. And having someone to talk to that actually knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It also can help some students with like schoolwork and stuff and like having teachers be more understanding about that. But it's also kind of hard with, I guess, with teachers because they have a lot on their plate too. So it's like you can't make exceptions for everybody. But I think that we should have a system in place for like a therapist or someone they can talk to that they feel safe to talk to and the, someone that is going to actually do something about it. We do have a therapist at school. We do? Yeah. See? And making sure we know that we have <laughs> on campus ground. So I didn't know. Making information. That's good. It's good for Spreading us awareness about this. It's been in years and I've been in school therapist. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> clearly from your presentation and then just sort of knowing in general life, a lot of people go to therapy, but it seems like there's sort of this stigma around like going to therapy or saying, hey, I struggle with depression and anxiety. <coughs> Do you have any ideas for how we could sort of work against that stigmatization as community? It's hard because like that with like a, most people feel like having a mental illness or having some condition is like a form of weakness and no one really wants to talk about that and no one because people with it don't really want people to know. I know my sister doesn't want anyone to know, and it's like they kind of need to know. Because, like, you could say something to her, and she'll be like, it's fine, but really she'll go home, and it won't be so okay. I don't really know if we can stop the stigmatism around that. It all depends on how we grow as a country and as a whole. Because some people might not think that mental health is a real thing, like depression is a real thing. So I guess it really depends on the person. I was gonna kind of ask that same question. Like I know in my group of friends, the stigma is kind of getting, like it's it's almost, a, I wouldn't say a cool thing to go, but it's, it's happening more as you could see in the chart. Like more yeah. people are going to therapy and I didn't know if you could, if you felt that amongst your peers, like I'm almost in my 40s, and I'm like, oh, wow, like we're we're talking about things more openly, and we are going to therapy, and we are, you know, like we're not hiding in the closet yeah. about it, or that stigma of like, oh, you go to therapy, oh, wow, and I'm curious with your peers. It has definitely become more like an open thing that we talk about, because like. I ask my sister, when well, do you have therapy? I ask my friend, do you have therapy today? And it's not really seen as a bad thing. It's like it's your mental health. Like it's not terrible to fix your mental health or make it better, mm -hmm. especially if you've gone through something so traumatic. So I think it should be more aware and people should, it's not a terrible thing. Like it's not seen as bad if you go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Actually. I'm curious when you say my peers and my group, uh, what the ratio of uh, girls to guys, female to male is, and if you, what you're seeing, because uh, in my line of work, it's very hard for younger males or even some older males to stop working or. Um, just accept that they need therapy or they need help or, you know, so I'm wondering about the younger generation. Um, I, I don't feel like I have a lot of males that talk about it. There is the one in my friend group that talks about it, but then again, it also could be that they might not be comfortable opening up about it, where others is more comfortable opening up about saying, this is what happened to me, I'm going to therapy because of it. Some people really just don't want anyone to know about it because one, they could be made fun of. Two, they could like someone might like just say that they made that up and that's not true. 
So I feel like it's more common for females to open up about it, but there's also some that don't want anyone to know, whether it's like a personal thing or it's they just don't really want anyone to know. Some people are more private than others. I'm not as private as my sister is. So usually people come to me when they want to know about her because I know more answers than she does. So, and she'll get, they'll get something out of me, but she's just more private. Things? Anything else? <laughs> yeah. Um, what have you learned about taking care of your own mental health? <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs>